Canada. Canada is a Dravidian language spoken predominantly by Canada people in India, mainly in the state of Karnataka, and by significant linguistic minorities in the states of Andhra Pradesh, Telangana, Kerala and abroad. The language has roughly 43.7 million native speakers, who are called Kanadivas. Kannada is also spoken as a second and third language by over 12.9 million non kannada speakers living in Karnataka, which adds up to 56.6 million speakers. It is one of the scheduled languages of India in the official and administrative language of the state of Karnataka. The Kannada language is written using the Kannada script, which evolved from the 5th century Kadamba script. Kannada is attested epigraphically for about one and a half millennia and literary old Kannada flourished in the 6th century Ganga dynasty and during the 9th century Rashtrakuta dynasty. Kannada has an unbroken literary history of over a thousand years. Kannada literature has been presented with H. Nanapith awards, the most for any Dravidian language and the second highest for any Indian language. Based on the recommendations of the Committee of Linguistic Experts, appointed by the Ministry of Culture, the Government of India designated Kannada Classical Language of India. Kannada is considered to be one of the oldest living languages. In July 2011, a center for the study of classical Kannada was established as part of the Central Institute of Indian Languages at Mysore to facilitate research related to the language. Kannada is a southern Dravidian language, and according to Dravidian scholar Sanford B. Stever, its history can be conventionally divided into three periods Old Kannada, Hela Ganada, from 450 to 1200 CE, Middle Kannada, Nadugganada, from 1200 to 1700, and modern Kannada from 1700 to the present. Kannada is influenced to an appreciable extent by Sanskrit. Influences of other languages such as Prakrit and Pali can also be found in the Kannada language. The scholar of Adam Mahadevan indicated that Kannada was already a language of rich oral tradition earlier than the 3rd century BCE, and based on the native Kannada words found in Prakrit inscriptions of that period. Kannada must have been spoken by a widespread and stable population. The scholar K.V. Narayana claims that many tribal languages which are now designated as Kannada dialects could be nearer to the earlier form of the language, with lesser influence from other languages. The sources of influence on literary Kannada grammar appear to be threefold Panini's grammar, non Paninian schools of Sanskrit grammar, particularly Katantra and Sakatayana schools, and Prakrit grammar. Literary Prakrit seems to have prevailed in Karnataka since ancient times. The vernacular Prakrit speaking people may have come into contact with Kannada speakers, thus influencing their language, even before Kannada was used for administrative or liturgical purposes. Kannada phonetics, morphology, vocabulary, grammar, and syntax show significant influence from these languages. Some naturalized, Tad Bhava, words of Prakrit origin in Kannada are, Vana, color, derived from Vana. Hanaim, full moon, from Punava. Examples of naturalized Sanskrit words in Kannada are, Varna, color, Arasu, king, from Rajan, Purnima, and Raya from Raja, king. Like the other Dravidian languages Kannada also has borrowed, Tatsama, words such as Dina, day, Kopa, anger, Surya, sun, Maka, face, Nimisa, minute, and Anna, rice. Puravahail Ganada. This Kannada term literally translated means previous form of Old Kannada was the language of Banavasi in the early Common Era, the Satavahana, Shutu Satakarni, Naga, and Kadamba periods and thus has a history of over 2,500 years. The Ashokarak edict found at Brahmagiri, date to 230 BCE, has been suggested to contain words in identifiable Kannada. According to Jain tradition, Brahmi, the daughter of Rishabhadava, the first tire thanker of Jainism, invented 18 alphabets, including Kannada, which points to the antiquity of the language. Supporting this tradition, an inscription of about the 9th century CE, containing specimens of different alphabets, mostly Dravidian, was discovered in a giant temple in the Deogar fort. Greek dramatist Euripides, 480 to 406 BCE, and Aristophanes, 446 to 386 BCE of the 5th-4th century BCE were purportedly familiar with the Kannada country and language which can be concluded by the usage of Kannada words, phrases and expressions in their Greek plays along with Persian and Punic. This would show a far more intimate contact of the Greeks with Kannada culture than with Indian culture elsewhere. The Kannada word orally, 
Lidit means in a village, is said to be written on a huge wall constructed in Alexandria in the 4th century BCE as part of remnants of 36,000 palm manuscripts that had been burned in an accidental fire in Alexander's time. The palm manuscripts contain texts written not only in Greek, Latin, and Hebrew, but also in Sanskrit and Kannada. In some 3rd 1st century BCE Tamil inscriptions, words of Kannada influence such as Nalyura, Kavudi and puzzle have been introduced. The use of the vowel as an adjective is not prevalent in Tamil, but its usage is available in Kannada. Kannada, the words such as Gudi Gavudi transform into Tamil's Kavudi for lack of the usage of Gosha Swana in Tamil. Hence, the Kannada word Gavudi becomes Kavudi in Tamil. Puzzle, Ha Ilu, was introduced into Tamil from Kannada, and colloquial Tamil uses this word as veil. In the 1st century CE Tamil inscription, there is a personal reference to Ejayakama word of Kannada origin. In a 3rd century CE Tamil inscription there is usage of a Panathavi Arandat here the honorific appa to a person's name is an influence from Kannada. Another word of Kannada origin is Tavaru and is found in a 4th century CE Tamil inscription. S. Setter studied the Sitan fossil inscription of 1st century CE as also the inscriptions at Tiruparankan Ram Kama Adakala and Nidan Upadi. The later inscriptions were studied in detail by Iravadam Mahadevan also. Mahadevan argues that the words Arumi Kama Kavudi Kama Pashal and Tiyayar have their origin in Kannada because Tamil cognates are not available. Setter adds the words Nadu and I layer to this list. Mahadevan feels that some grammatical categories found in these inscriptions are also unique to Kannada rather than Tamil. Both these scholars attribute these influences to the movements and spread of Jainas in these regions. These inscriptions belong to the period between 1st century BCE and 4th century CE. These are some examples that are proof of the influence of Kannada on Tamil before the Common Era and in the early centuries of the Common Era. In the 150 CE Prakrit book Gatha Saptashadi, written by Hala Raja, Kannada words like tear or tear, meaning to be able, tupa, petit patu, pata, pitu, meaning to strike, pod, hoda, have been used. On the Pallava Prakrit inscription of 250 CE of higher Hadagali's Shiva's Kandavarman, the Kannada word coat transforms into kata. In the 350 CE Chandra Valley Prakrit inscription, words of Kannada origin like punata, Punata have been used. In one more Prakrit inscription of 250 CE found in Malavali, Kannada towns like Vigoram, Vigoaru, Kandamuch Chandi find a reference. Pliny the Elder, 23-79 CE, was a naval and army commander in the early Roman Empire. He writes about pirates between Musiris and Nitrias, Netravati River. He also mentions Barris, Barcelor. Nitrias of Pliny and Nitran of Ptolemy refer to the Netravati River as also the modern port city of Mangaluru, upon its mouth. Many of these are Kannada origin names of places and rivers of the Karnataka coast of 1st century CE. The Greek geographer Ptolemy, 150 CE, mentions places such as Padayamayoi, Padami, And, Indi, Kalajiris, Calgary, Modaguya, Mutigal, Petrigala, Padadakal, Hippogura, Huvina Hipparagi, Nagaris, Nagar, Tabasso, Tavasi, Tirupangalita, Gadanglai, Subatu or Sabatha, Savadi, Banuis, Banavasi, Thagoram, Thagara, Biathana, Pathan, Syramalaga, Maakt, Alo, Elapur, and Passage, Palisage, indicating prosperous trade between Egypt, Europe, and Karnataka. He also mentions Paunada, Punada, and refers to barrels, i.e., the Vayuria gems of that country. He mentions Malipola, Malp, a coastal town of Karnataka. In this work, Larica and Kondaloi are identified as Rastrika and Kuntala. Ptolemy writes that in the midst of the false mouth and the barrios, there is a city called Maganur, Mangalore. He mentions inland centers of pirates called Oloikora, Alavakata. He mentions Ariyaki Sadinan, meaning Ariyakasata Karni, and Bethana as the capital of Siro Eptolomeos, i.e., Sri Pulamai. Clearly indicating his knowledge of the Zatavahana kings. The word Pulamai means one with body of tiger in Kannada, which bears testimony to the possible Kannada origin of Zatavahana kings. A possibly more definite reference to Kannada is found in the Karishan Mime ascribed to the late 1st to early 2nd century CE. The farce, written by an unknown author, is concerned with a Greek lady named Karishan who has been stranded on the coast of a country bordering the Indian Ocean. The king of this region, and his countrymen, sometimes use their own language, and the sentences they speak could be interpreted as Kannada, including Konhamadu Patraki Haki, 
having poured a little wine into the cup separately, and Panambaretti Kadi Madhuvambaretuvanu, having taken up the cup separately and having covered it, I shall take wine separately. The language employed in the papyrus indicates that the play is set in one of the numerous small ports on the western coast of India, between Karwar and Kanangad, presently in Kerala. The character of the king in this farce refers to himself as the Nayaka of Malp, Malpinike. B. A. Solitori identifies the site of this play as Odapandeshwara or Vatapandeshwara, ship vessel Ishwar or God, situated about a mile from Malp, which was a Shaivite center originally surrounded by a forest with a small river passing through it. He rejects Sam Govindapai's opinion that it must have occurred at Udyavara, Odora in Greek, the capital of Alupas. Stavros J. Tsitsarides mentions in his research work that Carition is not an exclusively prose or verse text, but a mix formed out the corrupt lines indicate that the text found at Oxyrhynchus, Egypt, has been copied, meaning that the original was even earlier in date. Willemowitz, 1907, and Androssi, 2001, say that for more precise dating of the original, some place the composition of the work as early as in the Hellenistic period, 332 30 BCE, others at a later date up to the early 2nd century CE. The earliest examples of a full-length Kannada language stone inscription, Shailasha Shana, containing Brahmi characters with characteristics attributed to those of proto kannada in Hale Kannada, Little Old Kannada, script can be found in the Halmidi inscription, usually dated circa AD 450, indicating that Kannada had become an administrative language at that time. The Halmidi inscription provides invaluable information about the history and culture of Karnataka. The Kannada inscription excavated at the Pranaveshwara temple complex at Talaganda near Shiralakapa in Shikaripur Talak of Shivamaga district, dated to 370 CE is said to be one of the earliest Kannada inscriptions replacing the Halmidi inscription of 450 CE. The 5th century Tamate Kalu inscription of Chitradurga and the Chikamagaluru inscription of 580 are further examples. Recent reports indicate that the old Kannada Nishadi inscription discovered on the Chandrajri hill, Shravana Belagola, is older than Halmidi inscription by about 50 to 100 years and may belong to the period 8350 to 400. The noted archaeologist and art historian S. Shetter is of the opinion that an inscription off the western Ganga king Kong Univarma Madhava, circa 350 to 370, found at Tagardi, Tiagardi, in Shikaripur Italic of Shimoga district is of 350 CE and is also older than the Halmidi inscription. Current estimates of the total number of existing epigraphs written in Kannada range from 25,000 by the scholar Sheldon Pollock to over 30,000 by the Amoresh. of the Sashija Academy. Prior to the Halmidi inscription, there is an abundance of inscriptions containing Kannada words, phrases and sentences, proving its antiquity. The 543 AD Badami Cliff inscription of Pulaxia is an example of a Sanskrit inscription in Old Kannada script. Kannada inscriptions are not only discovered in Karnataka but also quite commonly in Andhra Pradesh and Telangana, Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. Some inscriptions were also found in Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat. The northernmost Kannada inscription of the Rashtrakutas of 964 CE is the Jura record found near Jebelpur in present day Madhya Pradesh, belonging to the reign of Krishna III. This indicates the spread of the influence of the language over the ages, especially during the rule of large Kannada empires. Few sites of Myanmar yielded variety of Indian scripts including those written in a script especially archaic, most resembling the Kadamba, Kannada-speaking Kadambas of 4th century CE Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh, form of common Kannada Telugu script from Andhra Pradesh. The earliest copper plates inscribed in Old Kannada script and language, dated to the early 8th century AD, are associated with Alupa King Aluvarasa II from Belmanu, the Dakshina Kannada district and display the double-crested fish, his royal emblem. The oldest well-preserved palm-leaf manuscript in Old Kannada is that of Davala. It dates to around the 9th century and is preserved in the Jain Bandar, Mudbidri, Dakshina Kannada district. The manuscript contains 1,478 leaves written using ink. Some early Kadamba dynasty coins bearing the Kannada inscription Vera and Skanda were found in Satara Collectorate. A gold coin bearing three inscriptions of Sri and an abbreviated inscription of King Bajaratha's name called Baji, circa AD 390 to 420, in Old Kannada exists. A Kadamba copper coin dated to the 5th century AD with the inscriptions from Anuragi in Kannada script was discovered in Banavasi, Uttar Kannada district. Coins with Kannada legends have been discovered spanning the rule of the Western Ganga dynasty, the Badami Shalukyas, the Alupas, 
the Western Chalukyas, the Rashtrakutas, the Hoysalas, the Vihayanagar Empire, the Kadamba dynasty of Banavasi, the Kaladi Nayakas and the Mysore Kingdom, the Badami Chalukya coins being a recent discovery. The coins of the Kadambas of Goa are unique in that they have alternate inscription of the king's name in Kannada and Devanagari in triplicate, a few coins of the Kadambas of Hangal are also available. The oldest existing record of Kannada poetry in Tripati meter is the Kaparabhata record of AD 700. Kavarajamarga by King Naripatunga Moavarshai, AD 850, is the earliest existing literary work in Kannada. It is a writing on literary criticism and poetics meant to standardize various written Kannada dialects as in literature in previous centuries. The book makes reference to Kannada works by early writers such as King Durvanita of the 6th century and Ravi Kurdi, the author of the Ihole record of 636 AD. Since the earliest available Kannada work is one on grammar and a guide of sorts to unify existing variants of Kannada grammar and literary styles, it can be safely assumed that literature in Kannada must have started several centuries earlier. An early extant prose work, the Vataradhan, by Shiva Koshacharya of AD 900, provides an elaborate description of the life of Bhadrabhava of Shravana Belagola. Kannada works from earlier centuries mentioned in the Kalvarajamarga are not yet traced. Some ancient texts now considered extinct but referenced in latter centuries are Prabrita, AD 650, by Samakundacharya, Chudamani, Crestjul, AD 650, by Srivaradhadava, also known as Tumbaloracharya, which is a work of 96,000 verse measures and a commentary on logic, Tatwartha Mahashastra. Other sources date Chudamani to the 6th century or earlier. The Karnachwarakata, a eulogy for King Pulixi II, is said to have belonged to the 7th century, the Gajastaka, a work on elephant management by King Shivamara II, belonged to the 8th century, and the Chandra Prabha Purana by Sri Vijaya, a court poet of King Amoavarsha I, is ascribed to the early 9th century. Tamil Buddhist commentators of the 10th century AD, in the commentary on Nemrinatham, a Tamil grammatical work, make references that show that Kannada literature must have flourished as early as the AD 4th century. Around the beginning of the 9th century, Old Kannada was spoken from Kaveri to Godavari. The Kannada spoken between the rivers Bharata and Malaprabha was the pure well of Kannada undefiled. The late classical period gave birth to several genres of Kannada literature, with new forms of composition coming into use, including ragail, a form of blank verse, and meters like Sangatya and Shatpati. The works of this period are based on Jain and Hindu principles. Two of the early writers of this period are Hari Haran and Raghavanka, trailblazers in their own right. Hari Haran established the Raghail form of composition while Raghavanka popularized the Shatpati, six line stanza, meter. A famous Jain writer of the same period is Jana, who expressed Jain religious teachings through his works. The Vaikanasashitya tradition of the 12th century is purely native and unique in world literature and the sum of contributions by all sections of society. Vikanas were pithy poems on that period's social, religious and economic conditions. More importantly, they held a mirror to the seed of social revolution, which caused a radical re-examination of the ideas of caste, creed and religion. Some of the important writers of Vikana literature include Basavana, Alama Prabhu, and Akamahadavi. Emperor Nripatunga Moavarsha I of 850 CE recognized that the Sanskrit style of Kannada literature was Margi, formal or written form of language, and Desi, folk or spoken form of language, style was popular and made his people aware of the strength and beauty of their native language Kannada. In 1112 CE, Jain poet Nayasena of Malagunda, Darvad district, in his Champu work Dharmamrita, a book on morals, warns writers from mixing Kannada with Sanskrit by comparing it with mixing of clarified butter and oil. He has written it using very limited Sanskrit words which fit with idiomatic Kannada. In 1235 CE, Jain poet Amdeya, wrote Kabagar Kava, poet's defender, also called Sobhajina Sigjai, harvest of beauty, or Madana Vijaya and Kavanagela, Cupid's conquest, a Champu work in pure Kannada using only indigenous, Desia. Kannada words and the derived form of Sanskrit words, tad bhavas, without the admixture of Sanskrit words. He succeeded in his challenge and proved wrong. This will had advocated that it was impossible to write a work in Kannada without using Sanskrit words. Andaya may be considered as a protector of Kannada poets who were ridiculed by Sanskrit advocates. Thus, Kannada is the only Dravidian language which is not only capable of using only native Kannada words and grammar in its literature, like Tamil 
but also use Sanskrit grammar and vocabulary, like Telugu, Malayalam, Tulu, etc. The Champu style of literature of mixing poetry with prose owes its origins to the Kannada language which was later incorporated by poets into Sanskrit and other Indian languages. During the period between the 15th and 18th centuries, Hinduism had a great influence on Middle Kannada, Nadugannada language and literature. Kumaravyasa, who wrote the Karnata Burita Kathmanjari, was arguably the most influential Kannada writer of this period. His work, entirely composed in the native Bhimini Shatpati, Hexameter, is a sublime adaptation of the first ten books of the Mahabharata. During this period, the Sanskritic influence is present in most abstract, religious, scientific and rhetorical terms. During this period, several Hindi and Marathi words came into Kannada, chiefly relating to feudalism and militia. Hindu saints of the Vaishnava sect such as Kanaka Dasa, Purandara Dasa, Narahara Tirtha, Vyasa Tirtha, Sri Padaraya, Vidira Yadiratha, Vijaya Dasa, Jagannath Dasa, Prasanna Venkata Dasa produced devotional poems in this period. Kanaka Dasa's Ramadanya Charity, is a rare work, concerning with the issue of class struggle. This period saw the advent of Haridasa Sashidya, lit Dasa literature, which made rich contributions to Bhakti literature and sowed the seeds of Carnatic music. Purandara Dasa is widely considered the father of Carnatic music. The Kannada works produced from the 19th century make a gradual transition and are classified as Hosaganata or modern Kannada. Most notable among the modernists was the poet Nandalite Madana, whose writing may be described as the dawn of modern Kannada, though generally, linguists treat Indira Bay or Sadharma Vihayavu by Galvedi Venkata Raya as the first literary works in modern Kannada. The first modern movable type printing of Canaris appears to be the Canaris Grammar of Kerry printed at Sarampri in 1817 and the Bible and Canaris of John Hans in 1820. The first novel printed was John Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress, along with other texts including Canaris Proverbs, The History of Little Henry and His Bearer by Mary Martha Sherwood, Christian Gottlob Barth's Bible Stories and a Canaris Hymn Book. Modern Kannada in the 20th century has been influenced by many movements, notably Navodaya, Navya, Naviatara, Dalita and Bandaya. Contemporary Kannada literature has been highly successful in reaching people of all classes in society. Further, Kannada has produced a number of prolific and renowned poets and writers such as Kuvempu, Bender, and V. K. Gokak. Works of Kannada literature have received H. Nyanpith awards, the highest number awarded to any Indian language. Besides being the official and administrative language of the state of Karnataka, Kannada language is present in other areas. There is also a considerable difference between the spoken and written forms of the language. Spoken Kannada tends to vary from region to region. The written form is more or less consistent throughout Karnataka. The ethnologue reports about 20 dialects of Kannada. Among them are Kundaganada, spoken exclusively in Kundapura, Nadavar Kannada, spoken by Nadavaru, Havaganada, spoken mainly by Haviaka Brahmins, Arbash, spoken by Gauda community mainly in Madakari and Sulia region of Dakshina Kannada. Malanaja Kannada, Sakaleshpur, Gorg, Shimoga, Chikmagalore, Sholaga, Gulbarga Kannada, Darwa Kannada etc. All of these dialects are influenced by their regional and cultural background. The one million Kumarpans in and around Goa speak their own dialect of Kannada, known as Halaganada. They are settled throughout Goa state, throughout Uttara Kannada district and Kanapur Talak of Belagavi district, Karnataka. The Halaki Vakaligas of Uttara Kannada. Shimoga and Dakshina Kannada districts of Karnataka speak in their own dialect of Kannada called Halaki Kannada or Aikjaganada. Their population estimate is about 75,000. Ethnologue also classifies the group of four languages related to Kannada, which are, besides Kannada proper, Badaga, Holia, Kurumba, and Durali. Nasik district of Maharashtra has a distinct tribe called Hotkar Kaanadi people who speak a Kannada, Kaanadi. Dialect with lot of old Kannada words. Purchidanandamorti, they are the native people of Nasik from ancient times, which shows that North Maharashtra's Nasik area had Kannada population 1,000 years ago. Kannada speakers form 0.12% of Nasik district's population as per 1961 census. Arnarasa Macharya considers Tulu, Kodava, Toda, Kota, Badaga, and Irula as Kannada dialects due to their closeness to Kannada. The director of the Central Institute of Indian Languages, Udayanarayana Singh, 
submitted a report in 2006 to the Indian government arguing for Kannada to be made a classical language of India. In 2008 the Indian government announced that Kannada was to be designated as one of the classical languages of India. The language uses 49 phonemic letters, divided into three groups, Swargalu, vowels, 13 letters, Vyanjanagalu, consonants, 34 letters, and Yogava Akagalu, neither vowel nor consonant, 2 letters, Anusvara and Visarga. The character set is almost identical to that of other Indian languages. The Kannada script is almost perfectly phonetic, but for the sound of a half n, which becomes a half m. The number of written symbols, however, is far more than the 49 characters in the alphabet, because different characters can be combined to form compound characters, adikshara. Each written symbol in the Kannada script corresponds with one syllable, as opposed to one phoneme in language like English. The Kannada script is syllabic. Kannada Kannada Dictionary has existed in Kannada along with ancient works of Kannada grammar. The oldest available Kannada dictionary was composed by the poet Rana called Ranakanda, in 996 A's. Other dictionaries are Abhidana Vastukasha, by Nagavarma 1045 A's, Amarakasha Adatiku, by Vitala, 1300, Abhinavabhidana, by Abhinava Mangaraja, 1398 A's, and many more. A Kannada English dictionary consisting of more than 70,000 words was composed by Ferdinand Kittel. G. Ven Katasabaya edited the first modern Kannada Kannada dictionary, a 9,000 page, 8 volume series published by the Kannada Sashitya Parishat. He also wrote a Kannada English dictionary and a Klistapadakosa, a dictionary of difficult words. Kannada has 34 consonants and 13 vowels. The canonical word order of Kannada is Sav, subject object verb. As is the case with Dravidian languages. Kannada is a highly inflected language with three genders, masculine, feminine, and neuter are common, and two numbers, singular and plural. It is inflected for gender, number and tense, among other things. The most authoritative known book on old Kannada grammar is Shabdamana Darpana by Kshiraja. The first available Kannada book, a treatise on poetics, rhetoric and basic grammar is the Kavarajamarga from 850 CE. The most influential account of Kannada grammar is Kshiraja's Shabdamana Darpana, circa AD 1260. The earlier grammatical works include portions of Kavarajamarga, a treatise on Alankara, of the 9th century, and Kavyavalakana and Karnatakabhashabhushana, both authored by Nagavarma II in the first half of the 12th century. Compound bases, called Samasa in Kannada, are a set of two or more words compounded together. There are several types of compound bases, based on the rules followed for compounding. The types of compound bases or samases, Tatpurusha, Karmadharaya, Devigu, Bahuvrihi, and Shi, Dvindva, Kriya and Ganaka Samasa. Examples, Tangali, Hemera, Kanusan. In many ways the third-person pronouns are more like demonstratives than like the other pronouns. They are pluralized like nouns and whereas the first and second person pronouns have different ways to distinguish a number. Thanks for watching. Don't forget like the video and don't forget to subscribe.